Good afternoon all. Um, today I want to charge this supercapacitor module. It's um, six supercapacitors, though they are 2.7 volts, 10 farads in series, and they've got um, protection or balance uh, discharge circuits there. I want to charge them using this, which is an LTC 3780 buck boost converter. So um, I'll probably put um, about 13 and a half volts in here from my lead acid battery bank. And this will get charged up to 16.2 volts. So this will be uh, bucking initially, but then boosting afterwards. But really why I want to do this is I want to do it with no um, anti-backfeed diode in this circuit here. So I'm simply going to connect this uh, bank of supercapacitors to the output of this unit, charge it up to 16.2 uh, volts, then switch this unit off. Now I can either switch it off with this switch, which um, just disables the output, or I can switch it off by pulling the plug on my supply voltage. I might try both because I want to see how quickly these capacitors um, discharge back into this unit. And really, I mean, um, I, I want to know that this works without an anti-backfeed diode. So I want to see whether anything sort of comes to grief. So I'm going to need um, the soldering iron. I'm going to solder these two wires into positive and negative on here. Uh, put them into the screw terminals on this unit and then start charging this up. Now I'm going to need um, a DVM or a DMM, a voltmeter, so that I can see what voltage this is charging up to. Now you could say, why am I doing this? Um, there's nothing to stop me putting a diode in this circuit so that I don't get any backfeed from my supercapacitor bank back into the power supply that's charging it. Um, but I'm just interested in what actually the issues are with backfeed. Is backfeed going to cause damage to either of these two units? Can't see it happening, causing damage to the capacitors. Um, uh, and how much backfeed is there? That's, that's the other question I'm interested in. How quickly will this tiny bank of capacitors discharge back into this unit? Does this unit have um, a resistive element between positive and negative? Um, that would actually cause a discharge of current from here. I just want to see what happens. So uh, I'm going to do it without a diode in this test. Right, let's see if my iron is warm. Solder these wires into here. Uh, perhaps it's not quite warm enough yet. The uh, sun is coming in and out. It's trying to be spring don't know how effectively it is being spring yet. These are very awkward to solder. They are plated through, but they might be plated with um, a lead-free solder. Now, I'm not actually going to clip those uh, sticky out wires off because I think that'll be useful to attach my multimeter to. Now, measuring this um, back feed, if there is any back feed, um, how are we going to measure it? Well. The obvious thing, I suppose, would be to put um, an ammeter in these wires and measure the current flowing from this unit back to the power supply, um, if indeed there is any current flowing. But actually, I'm not sure that's going to be very useful because what I'm more interested in is how long does it take for this capacitor bank to discharge, if indeed it does discharge, back into here. So I'm more interested in time, really. And in fact, if you watch... Um, the voltage decay on capacitors over time, you can calculate um, the current that's flowing from how much charge is transferred either into or out of the capacitors. So you can back calculate uh, current from voltage and time. It's not a very easy calculation to make because if this presents a resistive load to these capacitors, then the discharge is going to be um, exponential so it's not an easy calculation to make, but but actually I'm not really interested in how much current back feeds because of course that's going to change. It's going if this is a resistive load, the current's going to be high at first, and then it's going to drop down to a low current. Um, so no, I'm more interested in time. How long can this, these things stay holding a, a useful voltage in the face of um, a discharge current back into this power supply? Let's connect it up and find out. Right, so I need my DVM. Now it's strange. Recently, I've taken to not using my um, DVM leads because, well, they're invariably far too long 
and they're not very flexible these either they're very rigid particularly in the extreme cold of my workshop I mean it is only 21 degrees in here today um, so yeah what I tend to do is put these little um, banana posts in my meter and then just use a couple of shorter crop clip leads I don't know I just prefer it. and these are more flexible as well uh, right so there are my crop clips connected up to positive and negative now I wouldn't expect to see need to turn the light on on this wouldn't expect to see um, too much voltage oh there is half a volt on there actually um, that's more than you normally get you normally get a few mini volts so yeah half a volt on that that's amazing why is there half a volt on there why hasn't that discharged this has been sent through the post from China and capacitors normally have quite a significant um, self discharge rate quite surprised at that anyway let's hook that these two up to the power supply and see what happens now I'm not expecting to get any sort of spark come out of this no I mean there are capacitors here across the output so of course charge will be transferred from one set of capacitors to the other um, let's we can get both of these wires in here simultaneously which is proving tricky right let's clamp those down hoping that they've gone in properly yep that seems right uh, still got half a volt on there how interesting now of course I've just realized that um, I don't know what these pots are set to well I kind of do because the last thing I had on here was a 12 volt bulb so I'm quite happy to take these capacitors up to 12 volts I don't know what the current limit was set to um, I mean probably something around 2 amps because I probably set it just above the point where that bulb lit at full brightness and that was a 21 watt bulb so it might be 2 amps 2.5 amps something like this so they'll probably charge quite quickly and stop charging at 12 volts then I can inch the voltage pot up to get these up to 16.2 I don't have any indicator LEDs on these so I won't be able to see whether some of the capacitors reach their maximum voltage before others so I'm kind of working a bit blind so maybe I'll take it up to 15 volts or something not take it all the way up to 16.2 uh, my undervolt lockout should be uh, set appropriately because as I say I had a bulb on here so I think we should be ready to plug in uh, the input supply and see how quickly uh, this goes up now of course it won't at the moment because the switch is off I've got my little red fault light on I haven't seen any movement on there at all which is very odd it's in DC volts yeah it's all correct okay let's switch on oh wow up it goes five six seven eight nine ten eleven should settle down around 12 volts so that charged pretty quickly which is not surprising these are only 10 farads each and this is probably set for in excess of two amps um, so that's fine now I can start inching uh, this voltage pot up so let's do that and I've got a virtually real-time response if I take this relatively slowly so I'm going to take it up to about 15 volts there's no point going to a place where one capacitor could uh, easily go over voltage so we'll stop there and then what I'm interested in is what happens in terms of backfeed so let's switch that off and there does appear to be some backfeed but it's pretty minimal really that's hanging on really quite well I suppose I could try taking one of these wires out and I'm kind of expecting it to drop back a little bit even without that connected and it is because they do tend to I mean there might be some um, leakage back through these protection circuits who knows but certainly it doesn't seem to be much difference between having that wire out and having that wire in, in. oh it actually <laughs> lights up my um, output LED there that's interesting isn't it that blue LED is probably just strapped across the output with a suitable resistor so by hooking that up it actually lights that up but I don't think there's much difference between that out the speed at which that's dropping down and with that in and in fact really the backfeed issue here is more about it lighting that LED up so the 20 milliamps or so that that LED is consuming let's hook that back up permanently 
So yeah, these capacitors are driving that LED, so they will discharge into it. I mean, I could remove that LED, I suppose. If I take the input out, does it make any difference? No, not really significantly. So yeah, I think the main issue with backfeed from the capacitors into the power supply in this instance is actually that blue LED. Right, so it is still dropping down. It is still powering that LED. Let's switch this back on. That immediately pushes it back up to 15 volts. Um, it's not really, I was gonna go a bit high, but I don't think there's any point really. Um, I'm quite happy for it to be at 15 volts. And then I could, after switching that off, calculate the current in here by doing a calculation based on capacitance, um, which is actually 10 farads divided by six, so it's 1.6 farads, I think. Time would be another component in my calculation uh, to get sort of coulombs traveling, and then, you know, coulombs and time, you can calculate current, because current, of course, is um, amp seconds. It's, uh, cool, no, charge is amp seconds, so, Amps is uh, coulombs per second, I think, isn't it? So you can calculate how many coulombs per second are traveling from here to here, and therefore what current is flowing. And of course that will be higher when this is a high voltage, assuming this is a resistive load. It kind of is, because it's an LED with a resistor in series. Actually, it's kind of a complex load, isn't it? No, not at these voltages. That's gonna be a resistive load. But that's back feeding very slowly. I'm quite uh, quite happy with that. Now, of course, in my final um, supercapacitor powered Bluetooth speaker project, I'm not going to be using these little 10 farad capacitors. Nope, I'm going to be using these 700 farad capacitors um, and probably not six in series either. I'll probably go for eight in series. These are 2.5 volts, so eight in series will give a pack voltage of 20 volts initially. Of course, as the energy in the capacitor is used up, Unlike batteries, which hold a reasonably flat uh, voltage, these things will, the voltage will continually drop. Below about five volts, I don't think they're gonna be able to um, do anything useful in the amplifier and speakers part of the project. So we've really only got a 15 volt range from 20 volts down to about five volts that these things can provide energy. But is that little tiny blue LED going to be a significant worry when we've got uh, eight of these things all stacked up in series? Should I desolder that from this board so that we don't get a significant um, backfeed? Because it does seem that really there are very few issues with backfeed here, primarily that LED. So just for fun, let's pump it up to 15 volts again goes very quickly, doesn't it? I, as I say, I think this is probably two and a half, three amps maybe uh, that I'm pumping into these little capacitors. Turn off the power supply. And yes, we get a slow discharge. But I'm quite happy with that. I'm not gonna bother with an anti-backfeed diode. I'm just gonna hook the capacitor bank directly to the output of this. Even with these massive capacitors, I don't think we're gonna have a problem with any uh, sort of parts of the system failing due to backfeed, just a very dis slow discharge back into the output of this power supply. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Cheerio.